Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on this little acrylic painting. I am ready to learn how to do acrylic paintings and by extension opaque paintings like like my gouache that I have that I dabble in every once in a while but I've never really committed to learning. To learning how to do it well and to learn how to achieve the goals that I have with them. So every once in a while I pick them up whether it is acrylic or that gouache and I love it. And then after I finish that one piece, I kind of put it away and then I just go right back to my my tried and true watercolors, my my default. But there are so many things that that I really want to be able to try that I feel with watercolors it would be either a lot harder or almost impossible. And there are also a lot of things in watercolors that I think I've been using a little bit as a crutch. So so yeah, I I think that there's going to be a lot of exciting things for me to learn and figure out while I'm figuring out acrylic and gouache. And this I think is definitely more of an opportunity for me to learn both so I can have both of them in my arsenal. So when I'm starting a new painting, I can choose exactly what medium will work the best for all the elements that I have going on. And yeah, I just, I'm excited to talk a little bit more today about what I do when I'm learning a new medium, what things I'm thinking about and kind of my approach to it. So I think just like with anything, when it's time to learn how to use new tools as an artist, we all kind of have our own take on on how to approach it, how we learn best, how how we gain skills and knowledge. But for me, I think I tend to work best with like a combination of just diving right in and trying out the medium, but also looking up different tutorials on how to use it. Now, I, I find that it's just so much better for me right from the beginning to start putting paint down or, or whatever the actual method is. And of course this goes without saying, but you can't get better at a medium unless you're actually physically using it. No matter how book smart you are on something until you're actually applying it and seeing how things mix, how it actually applies, what things you have to troubleshoot, you're never really going to get better at it. But, but I also find that when I'm looking up lots of tutorials or like things to, to pay attention to when you're working on this type of medium. I, I just feel like I'm overwhelmed with information sometimes. Like I'm not getting the right information. I'm just getting a lot of information or I'm getting a lot of information that's not applicable to the particular type of art that I want to create. So I find that it's really helpful to be able to start working with that medium seeing how how it blends what things i know i don't like or things that i know i need to figure out and then i can start looking for tutorials that very specifically tackle those elements so if you're starting to to think about getting into a new kind of method i definitely recommend buying some trying it out seeing what things you're struggling with and then that helps you form kind of an attack plan on where you want to get your in your information from and what information you do need now, probably my favorite way to learn something is to just take a class on it. That's how I got into watercolors. I took a class and they started from the very beginning and they taught you all the things you needed to know. But when it comes time to actually learning on your own, when you're, you're self learning these things, which is basically where I'm at at this point in my life, there's a lot of things that can steer you wrong and a lot of things that can steer you right. So. I don't know, I think I'm still I'm still trying to learn exactly how to approach new things all on my own when I don't quite know where to source it, but but if you have access to classes, I highly recommend it. I love it. it if anything, it helps you know what order to start learning things if you need outside help. But anyways, for this painting, as I was working on it and how I like to normally work when I'm starting something new is I'm really paying attention to to new things that are happening while I'm painting. So, so I guess what I mean by that is as I'm working on this, I'm noticing, which I kind of knew already, but I'm noticing that it is very glossy. That's the thing about acrylic paintings. Whereas with my acrylic gouache, it's very matte with watercolors. It's very matte and I love matte. So working on it, seeing this gloss effect, I know that I either need to research how I can completely mitigate it or how I can even it out. And, one option, I know that I can get a varnish that'll either, well, really it'll just even out the shine over the whole piece. So that's one thing that I need to do some research on. After using it, I know that's a thing that I need to figure out. Either I need to research if there's matte varnishes or satin ones, which I know there are, and that's kind of fun and exciting, but that's something that 
that I know I want to solve going forward because I, <laughs> I actually really hate while I'm working on it, looking and seeing how some areas are more matte and others are more shiny just because of what paint I'm using as well as how much of the other mediums I'm mixing in. So, so that's one thing for me to start with is I need to start researching mediums and varnishes that will achieve the exact effects that I want. And speaking of mediums and specifically, I'm talking about the kind that you add to, to your paints, not necessarily the like the name for different types of, of applications of artwork. So this is something that you add to your paint or your acrylic paints to get very specific effects, which is really exciting. That's something that I really need to research because I don't know everything that's possible with acrylics yet, but I think the more I look into these mediums, I can learn, okay, well, this one does this thing and I know that's a problem for me, so I can use that or this thing has this effect and I'd really like to try that out. So, so that is one thing that I do definitely want to do some research on. But specifically when I was working on this painting, I, I had heard from one of my favorite artists, Glenn Arthur, he uses, he paints in acrylic. So I, this is another, Another tip, if you're looking to get into a new medium, find artists that you love and see if you can research what types of things that they use or any little tips that they have that makes it work the way that they want it to. And by extension, makes it work maybe the way that you might want it to. But, but anyways, that was a bit of a tangent. He did mention at one point that he uses airbrush medium, which I thought was really interesting. So I did lots of research on it. And basically what it does is it, it allows the acrylic paint to be a lot thinner without breaking down. Like if you add too much water, you can start seeing the acrylic break apart a little bit. So it thins it down a lot. It actually stays pretty opaque. I was really surprised by that. And it levels it. Now, obviously by extension, because it's an airbrush medium, it does allow it to, if you add enough to be sprayed and to be applied in a really thin manner, but I wasn't adding quite that much. I just wanted enough to make it really thin and also to level and create this really smooth layer. I was so excited when I learned that this did that and that it worked for me. So in this painting, I, I made sure that I was using it plenty in her face and her face just doesn't have any of those like 3D ridges in the paint and I loved it. It just, it was like this breath of relief, I guess, because that's one of the things that when I had worked with acrylics in the past really put me off from it. I didn't want to continue because of that. As petty as it seemed, it was something that I, I did not like. But when I was working on the hair, I, I was mixing this like really thick paint for it and I didn't quite mix enough of that medium in there. So there are some ridges in the hair, but but if anything, that just reminded me that, that that medium really does work, that it is really something that I want to make sure is in all the paint that I'm, that I'm mixing and I'm using because of that effect. Another thing that I'm taking note of is that I really need to figure out how to work a little bit more efficiently with acrylics. Now this is just going to come naturally with learning how to use a new medium. The more I learn, the faster I can be, the quicker I can make decisions and know how to handle it. So that's a given. But I also noticed that while I was working on this, I was really getting hung up on certain things that I know that if I'm just paying attention better or I'm making better plans from the beginning, it's going to go smoother and faster. So at the very beginning, you probably saw she had a different skin color. It was really, really saturated. It was like a really bright orange and these really bright reds for the, for the shadows. So if I had been a little bit more thoughtful about making sure that I was painting correctly, that I was choosing the right color, then I wouldn't have wasted all that time on that first layer. Of course it was really valuable because I still learn certain things about how to apply the paint and how to paint it. But in the end, moving forward, the more thoughtful I can be about each step that I'm putting down and what paint I'm using and what paint colors I'm using, the faster it'll be and the less overworked the paintings can get. I, I also think that because it's opaque, it allows me to rework things endlessly, which is kind of both a, a blessing and a curse. It, it certainly is something that I'm really excited about because with watercolors, if I did something that was not quite good enough, some things I could fix, but others I would just have to live with it and move on. And this in a lot of respects is a lot more like digital where I can change the color of anything and I can keep reworking it. I can change how it's blending into one color, but it also means that it lets me get really stuck into certain things. So 
I think it's just a different mindset. I have to be aware that I can change things, but I have to make sure that I'm trying to get it right on the first try and maybe put a little bit more of that fear back into me when I'm working in watercolors. I'm really thoughtful, or at least a lot more thoughtful each time I'm about to put on a new wash or a new area I'm about to paint. And for the acrylics, I'm a little bit less so. So maybe I could just tap into a more thoughtful mindset before I start working on my acrylic paintings. But that is it for today. I am feeling really excited about diving into new paintings and learning new things. And and then when I also do watercolors, I think I'm going to be paying more attention to the really wonderful benefits that come with it, the things that I love. But yeah, I, I'm really I'm really looking forward to figuring this out and learning. But this original painting is available at my shop. So if you'd like to own her, there is a link down in the description that'll take you over to the shop. There's also a link to my Patreon, which is a great way to help support this channel and the artwork that I do. But that's it. I'll be back on Wednesday with another video and I will see you then. Bye.